What's up guys? Define999 here and I have a mail call video. Um, never fails. I always end up with packages of foreign comics in the mail. But this one is epic. This one is epic. This is one that was sent to me by my friend JF. Uh, we call him JF, but I think his name is pronounced Jean Francais, Jean Francois, I'm not quite sure. He is a French Canadian guy, He's part of the FCC crew. He's one of the original members um, of the FCC crew. When I say original, I mean one of the guys that was back in our old. What? Paul Cruz is watching. Okay, cool. Um, one of the guys that. Uh, was back in our old forum uh, when when I say FCC I mean foreign comic collector magazine so original members of the FCC crew are guys that you know hung out with us digitally of course virtually um, and were related to the old magazine and the old magazine forums that used to exist um, we have a new forum that exists but it's not really populated most of the foreign comic action is going on on social media and um, yeah, so we got a whole bunch of new people that are involved in the foreign group and whatnot, and uh, you know this niche is awesome. Uh, but JF is one of the original members. Now, what I wanted to talk about real quick was the fact that sourcing foreign comics isn't easy. Uh, it's not like just going to eBay. I know I've done a lot of videos where I talk about that. Uh, it, it takes a certain certain set of skills, as Liam Neeson would say, to be able to find these books. You can't just go to um, you know, foreign eBay even, they, though they have foreign eBay, and find them. Uh, you've got to build sources, you've got to build connections, you've got to find a way to get into those markets. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy to do. Uh, JF has proven himself to be a hell of a sourcer. In fact, I would say he's becoming one of the top sourcers within the foreign niche today. You know, um, all of the original FCC crew, crew guys, they're all good at sourcing stuff. We can all find books uh, in some of these markets if we need to, if we need to hone in and focus in, except some of the, some of the more extreme foreign back issue markets are practically impossible, even for us. Uh, but we do get lucky at times. But, you know, some of these countries like Hungary and Poland and um, South Africa, the Philippines, you've got to have contacts. You've got to be able to get into those countries. JF Tremblay says, gosh, what poor packaging. No, it, it, it looks really good packaging, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, JF, I'm excited to open this up. So, okay, so we want to get to the good stuff. But what I wanted to say was, thank you, JF. For those who are new to the niche, this shit isn't easy. And what JF has, helped, has allowed me to do is kind of piggyback on some buys. He was buying some stuff in some different markets. He knew what kind of books I had been looking for and just said, hey, I got this guy that has this book. Uh, do you want it? And I said, yeah, sure, I want it. So I'd send him the money and he would just pay. And that book that would be for me would come in on his source, on his connections. Um, and you see that a lot within the foreign niche. In fact, we're doing a double piggyback as I have a book in here for another friend uh, that I had JF get. So there's two books in here. So it's actually like a piggyback on a piggyback through a source. And so in, in a lot of ways within the niche, that's what you've got to do to find these books. Um, and, J and because JF knows me and knows a little bit about what sets I'm building, when he sees them, he lets me know. That's another thing we do in the niche. Ken Worthing says, yo, Matt. Yo, Ken, what's up? My mate, that's my mate from the UK. And Jose Manuel Flores says live auction. No, this is not a live auction. Nope. There are people doing live auctions, but I won't do them. Um, I don't have, never have enough things that I'm selling at the time. Um, but thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, so back, back to that part. Um, so that's really cool about all the group. You know, the foreign collecting community is pretty small. Sometimes when we, when we know people are looking for certain things, we'll all help each other in this way. And JF has really helped me in this way. So we're opening up the box. Looks like a really cool piece of styrofoam. Stefan Poitras. Poitras. Stefan. So Want to see it? Stop talking. I know. Okay. Okay. Face. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Sorry. Okay. Diary of the mouth here. 
I just talk too much because I, I know there's probably new people, new friends of mine that haven't heard me talk about sourcing, even though I talk about it almost every single Unboxing time. live from Jose Manuel Flores. Yep, it's an unboxing live. It's a mail call vid, not an auction. I believe this is the magazine. Now, JF knows that I'm hunting the Spider-Man 122 set. The 122 book for me is a special book. It's part of the Gwen Stacy death. Oh man, my blade actually fell off. It's part of that storyline and it's got possibly my favorite splash page of all time on the interior of it. Man, he, he packaged these good with uh, Spidey holding Gwen Stacy's body and the goblin flying above them. It's definitely a key book. A lot of people feel like 121's keyer because that's when Gwen actually died. But I kind of like... Whoa, see, I don't want to cut. kind of like 122 better simply because... Joe Rotella says, ciao, Matt. Ciao! How's it going? Mihal? Mihal. Mihal Levy says, Mexico. global como rules, global, global comico. He's making fun of me. Uh, Stefan says, don't cut the book. I I'm not. And Mihal says, yeah, baby. No, I'm, I'm not. I felt where it was. Here's the first one. Look at that. Plot number 20. This is a magazine. And it is, in my opinion, you know, it straddles the line of the 122 foreign edition because it's a magazine. It just kind of has the cover. JF Tremblay says I'll put less tape next time. Promise. No, it was okay, dude. <clears throat> it was packaged very well. Um, and it's this is cool, man. And you know what is interesting is they're talking about the storyline in here. Cabillo de planes en separado. Que ha pasado con el especial. Días del futuro pasado. Anyway, that's the Vertice uh, version of 121. Okay? And in the Vertice version of 121, the famous artist Lopez Espy redrew the cover and he redrew Spider Man looking at or flying out instead of us seeing his back, which is cool. Stefan says nice, Joel Rotella says sweet, and Ken Worthing in all caps says nice. Yeah, this is nice. This is cool. And uh, this was something that we didn't, had never really seen before until JF had showed this to me and said, hey, you're not going to believe what I found. Very cool. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. It's going to look cool with the 122 set picture. Okay, let's keep going. You have seven people watching. Seven people. Yeah. I'm famous, China. I know, right? My Somewhere daughter, China, there. is handling the duties today. My wife had to work uh, later than normal. Or on Fridays, she usually works later than me. Poor girl. So she is not handling that. But luckily, I have China here to take over the duties. Steve Shepard City says, I dig your videos, buddy. You do? I kind of sound dorky. Matt Tallon says awesomeness. Matt who? T-A-L-L-O-N. Oh, Tallon. Hey, Matt. What's up? Yeah. Thanks, Steve. I'm glad you like them. I don't normally do mail call videos, but this one's so epic that I had to do it. Steve says your daughter is a loser show for helping you out. She's awesome at this point. Man, JF, you, you did not fuck around, did you? Okay. JF can package. Package safely. And he had to. It's coming from Canada. The frozen wastes of the Arctic. I laugh because I, I, I consider anything past Colorado to be the frozen wastes. Over here in my desert. But up blowing in you up with likes. What's up? Oh, uh, someone's blowing you up with likes. Uh, 
Okay. Who's, what's Tabernak? Tabernak? Stefan says Tabernak. T A B A R N A K. I'm not sure. You're losing me, Stefan. Oh, God. This Spanish in here. <laughs> Cecilio A. J J J Jacobo Glaze mm -hmm. says Saludos. Saludos! De Mexico. Top Mexico! Mexico. Matt Talent, Talent says uh -huh. safe enough to keep a Wendigo or a Sasquatch from carrying <laughs> open, eh? Yeah, definitely. He he packages well. Stefan says not Canada, Quebec. Quebec, that's right. Quebecois! Yeah, there's a difference, goddammit. There's a difference between a Canadian and a French Canadian. The French Canadians should almost have their own goddamn country. But anyway. They could give a shit about the queen. Uh-oh, don't get mad, Ken. Don't get mad. Okay. <laughs> Hungarian. Pokember. So in Hungarian, Pokember is Spider-Man. And this is a relatively modern Spidey 50. Um, you can even see they used English. Peter Parker, Pokember. Uh, Marvel, Kingpin, clearly licensed. Very nice, relatively modern. But this is still a very cool book to put in my Spidey 50 set. Stefan and Ken says, LOL. Good, good. Steve Shepardson says, God save the queen. Oh, no. Get the sex pistols out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't get Ken started on that. Don't. Ken Worthing says, boo, Steve. Yeah, don't get Ken started on that. Um, yeah, cool book. I also build the Spider-Man 50 set. Hungarian, Pokember, awesome book. Notice it's kind of an odd format. It's not a full-blown comic size, but it's not a digest. So, kind of neat. Hungarian, Pokember, ASM50. Cecilio says, awesome Spidey, congrats. Yeah, that, that one is awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, now back to the 122. Same deal. Except instead of saying Peter Parker up here, it says, I don't know what that says. He het the len. Um, Hungarian is an interesting language for sure. And uh, it's from the same series. You'll notice they're the same size. Relatively modern. I believe this was printed maybe two or three years ago, if not even re more recent than that. Ni Hao says if Pokember is Spider-Man, how do they call Pokemon? I have no idea, Ni Hao. I wish I, I wish I could be like so smart that I could learn at least basic phrases in all the different languages, like you know, Spider-Man or comic book in all the different languages. But I'm just not that smart. Not that smart. Um, yeah, 122. Biggie, Biggie, 122. I'm going to put that to the side because I want to show you how many 122s JF found me. Dude really found me some 122s. I really, my 122 set is going to really be emboldened by it and it's going to owe him a huge debt of gratitude. And I'm in the middle of a competition with our good friend Bjorn that you just heard talk there. We are competing to see who can finish this set first. Stefan says, well, you're not. Huh? Stefan says, well, you're not. Oh, I'm not dumb? Or smart? Or Yeah, I'm not smart. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And then JF says, year on cover, buddy. What? Year on cover, buddy. Year on cover. Y-E-A-R on cover, buddy. Y-E-A-R. Year, like yearbook. On cover, buddy. Year on cover, I buddy. I can't I don't picture know. it in my brain. It's been a long week, God damn it, JF. I don't understand you, bro. Okay, <laughs> this was huge. Again, this is getting back to the piggybacking on the piggybacking on the, on the source. So I build the New Mutants 87 set. It's first appearance of Cable. Hot, hot book. Corey Pommel's probably the biggest fan of uh, Cable. He's one of the admins over at Collector's Corner. Great guy. The year um, is on the cover. That's oh. what he meant. Oh, 2017. 2017 year yeah, they're Cucumber. brand new. They're brand new. But who cares? Awesome book. And it's Hungarian. Can't beat it. Um, so, where was I? Oh, Corey Pommel. He's an admin at the Collector's Corner. I've been helping him with his New Mutants 87 set. I've been teaching him you know, a little bit how to source. He sourced a few of those books already by himself, but he needed help with Finland. Um, and JF... 
I don't know, he found, he somehow found this magical hole where New Mutants 87 Finland comes out of, you know, comes out of the ground, I don't know. But he found me too. So one of these is for Corey Pommel. This will complete both of our foreign New Mutants 87 sets. So huge shout out to JF for this. This is completing two foreign sets in two collectors here in the States. Uh, you know, how we did this is Corey Pommel sent me the money. I then sent that to JF. I sent JF the money for mine. And JF brought these along with his shipment. Can't thank you enough. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Hot book. My set is complete. Get ready. A, set, a completed set picture is coming. Get ready for that. I'm going to be very happy. You know, it's a big deal when you can complete a set. When you can say you have every single foreign cover of and edition, basically, of a popular book, it's a huge deal. You don't mess around with it. It's a very rare thing to be able to say that. Okay. Speaking of French Canada, X-Men 101, First Phoenix, EH, Editions Heritage. I don't know how I'd say that in French. It... Editions Heritage? Heritage? I don't know. Joe Rattles is where are they from? Uh, which ones, Joe? The ones that I just showed? Probably. Oh, or the, or well, probably the New Mutants. Uh, these are Finnish. Sorry, did I not say that? These are the Finnish New Mutants. Hungary. Oh, the, the Hungarian. Those ones are from Hungarian, these smaller ones. Hungary, Hungary and Finland. Ken Worthing says Matt Police put up this bit to your YouTube. Yeah, I will. And then Steve Shepherdson says, was that Hungarian packaged in a bag with stickers or candy, or was it standalone? I'm just curious. I don't mean to bring you back to talking about that. Oh, yeah. You're bringing me back, man. You guys are throwing me off. Um, I don't know. I've never even opened this. I know that Bjorn has opened his. JF found Bjorn one. And I know that apparently inside there is um, talk about a couple of the other editions, which is interesting because it makes me wonder if they're talking about this 122 in other languages but apparently there's Bjorn maybe will chime in here if you're still watching Bjorn apparently there's other covers of other countries within this issue besides Hungary so that is really cool I don't know if there's any extras on that one um, Steve says love that X-Men yeah X-Men and Joel Rotella says no the double one's finished okay thanks oh the the oh the New Mutants yeah, that one's Finnish. Um, or maybe the double. If he's saying double, maybe it's Hungarian? I'm not sure. Um, I'll go back through them at the end. Okay, Editions Heritage, French-Canadian, X-Men 101, First Phoenix. I have probably one of the rarest foreign editions of the 101, which is the Filipino. This one will go nicely with it. I do not have the American, though. Uh, one day I plan on getting it. Awesome book. Okay, Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, 101, classic cover, but this is the Canadian price variant. JF had had this one. Uh, there was a lot of Copper Age Canadian price variants that went up north into the frozen wastes of, Ca of Quebec and Canada. And, um, I mean, we're talking for every maybe 50 Americans, there's maybe a Canadian price variant. I don't know exactly what the print runs were, were on the Canadian price variants. Pretty much the only difference is the price, um, I think. I'm not sure if there's any other difference on the in, in, interior, if there's ad changes or not. But I do know that in comparison to the American Copper Age stuff, they're scarce. They're very scarce. Cecilio says, great X-Men issues. Love the blue background on the Phoenix. Issue. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. And, and just like with... Um, with a lot of the later EHs that did these kind of uh, Marvel Troy Danzun, it's basically saying there's three stories in there. This one has X Men, the Defenders, and Nova, and so there towards the end they were they were packaging them like that, and they'd pick they pick a cover, but there you know there's there's a Defender story in here and a Nova story in here. Um, Steve says I've always liked that cover. He um, to, I think to that one. Oh yeah. And Steve also says I'm slightly French Canadian, by the way. Oh, okay. Quebecois. <laughs> God, I'm I'm really dorking this video up. Um, yeah. So this is an awesome book. It'll go with my set Canadian price variant. 
I am a fucking dork. Don't cuss, China. Don't ever cuss. I'm not Okay, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. This is where, this is where, I mean, I, if I owe JF a beer, I really owe JF a beer. We're getting, we're getting close to it. But anyway, Finland. Finland 122, Marvel. Hamakami, Hamakamis is the finish. But they did Hamakami Han with like H-E-N. I'm not exactly sure why. It does say Klassikot or Klassikot. It's probably a uh, Spider-Man classic. 122, very cool. I love with the finished Marvels, how they have the little Marvel triangle on the top left. I've always dug that. Very cool book. Um, yeah, I'll have to, when, I, when I do my 122 set vid, I'll do more research into the specifics of them. This is just a show and tell. Um, I'm not sure on the rarity on this one in comparison to others, uh, but very cool. JF, I owe you, owe you so much for that. But this one, I owe you a beer, man. I owe you a fucking beer with this one. This one's a huge deal. This one's a very huge deal. This is the Cabanas Hellas Greek 122. Make sure not to cover the bottom. Um, the Cabanas Hellas Greek 122. All Cabanas Hellas Greeks are rare. There's no such thing as a common Cabanas Hellas Greek. Maybe common within their, you know, how often they come up for sale, but Cabanas Hellas Greeks are notoriously rare and hard to find Bronze Age Marvel books. Um, Steve says, oh snap. Yeah, oh snap. <laughs> this, is a, this is a badass book. Um, my 122 set, I've got the newer Greek, which is the smaller digest, but this one, I really owe JF for this. He says, peace. Yeah, yeah th this is a cool book. And, you know, the thing about it is, when you're building a set, there's a lot of books you can find that are com more common, more easy to get. And then there's books that are much more difficult to get. This one is on the definitely on the more difficult side. Maybe it's not the most difficult. I'm not going to say that. But um, it's definitely difficult. As the first Greek, Cabanas Hellas. This is what's important right here. The variation. I don't know if I can do this right. Variation is the lifeblood that feeds foreign sets. What year is it, Joe said? Uh, the Cabanas is 78, late 70s. I believe the first Cabanas Marvel came out in 76. This might be 77. I'd have to check. I'll know more when I do the the 122 set video. I'll do I'll do my research. I believe it's 77, could be 78. There were two uh, on the on the Greek cabanas. There were like two uh, major uh, groupings of titles that happened. There was the first couple, and then they did a second couple. I don't remember in the wave. I believe this was in the first wave. I believe the first. I believe Spider-Man was in the first wave, so this was definitely in there. So this could be 1977. Kind of worthy says for, for sure, Matt. And then in, very, in parentheses, he says variation. Variation fuels the lifeblood of foreign set building. The sets that people really want to build are the ones with the most variation. And, you know, that's what's so important. You also and, have a great book. Thank you, guys. So I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, we're going to go to happy hour. And um, I just want to get, again, I want to thank JF. He's really proving to be a badass sorcerer. And, um, you know, all the, the early FCC crew guys can source. But JF, he's really impressed me lately with this, his ability to get into these different countries um, and, and find stuff. Um, and he's spending the time. And that's the other thing. You know, I, I used to, at any given point, I'd be lucky, you know, I might have a, a package or two come in a week. Um, when I was really heavily hunting, I was able to, to find some stuff. But it takes a lot of time, and I just don't have it. And JF, he's, he's hitting on all cylinders as far as the sourcing goes. So I'd like to thank him on that and thank him for uh, letting me piggyback on his sources. Okay, guys, I will catch you later. This is Define 999. Nine, night. 
Define 999 and I am out.